Hey guys, I want to be really honest with you. Wait a minute, does that sound right? Do I lie to you most of the time? I don't know. Listen, sometimes I do these episodes and they don't start out to be an episode. It starts off being, I need to film this. I don't know why, but I wish I had if I don't. So I'm going to turn the camera on. Then I end up with a series of clips that don't seem to tie together into an episode, but somehow they do, depending on what you're medicating yourself with today. Anyway, I hope you're not doing that, but you may need to on this one to get where I'm going to take you. Listen, this is a Gibson B25, early to mid-60s. Nice guitar. You look it up. And you'll say, Ken, why are you working on that guitar? Well, thanks for your confidence there, buddy. Same back at you. But I got this guitar like the episode where I told you why bridges on flat top guitars are the stupidest thing ever up there. Yeah. And you get to learn how to build something really cool there. But anyway, I got this one in with a collection that was somebody was saying hey do this do this do this help me out here do this and and you can learn in the process well i learned that i don't like flat tops even more than i uh, did before but anyway didn't before so this one comes in and the bridge needed some more because it was popping up and whatever so this is like the discovery channel because we're going to discover some things about gibson in 19 uh, on this guitar, what they were doing with bridges, where I actually, once I figured out what was going on, I felt like, okay, I feel so much better about myself. And believe me, that is doing something. So, let's jump into a clip where I make a big discovery about magnets and metal and stuff that's not supposed to be on a guitar that looks like this. Let's go to the bench. This is a Gibson b25 it's from the mid 60s or early 60s and um this is kind of a pricey guitar um it's uh, has a smaller body than you might expect but it's it's a thick body and um like i said we have to do some work on the bridge here so the bridge has to come off now this was sent to me by way of fred and um before I left Fred's shop, there's a couple of things he told me. First off, is that wood is not usually magnetic. So, if I put the slopes down here, if I put this magnet here, even though it's round, it will roll down the bridge. You see that? So you can tell it's round. There's a little spot on here it wants to hang up, but watch this. If I put it there, and try and move it a little bit it keeps going right back to there do you see that it's just chick flick teal pointer doing it now you see that it wants to roll back there so how can this be well it would almost make you think that there is something metal in there now when it come time to work on this, there's another little issue. There was a spot here that was sunk down a little bit. So we used one of these. Have you ever seen one of these? You certainly don't want to try and jack up your car. But you can put this inside of a guitar and you can gently and you apply some steam and raise things back up. There's another guitar we're working on where you, you want to push down because something has popped up. And it's usually the bridge is pulling something up from the strings anyway. So the moral of the story was I was going to have to remove this. That was the task at hand. Now you might think there's some heated up spatulas or something like that, but you certainly wouldn't expect to be using ratchet drives and all this and that and extensions to get back underneath here like this. But that's exactly what I had to do. Now why would that be? Well... Once I started checking it out, I figured out that the reason the magnet stuck to certain places is there's actually screws in there, like 
like <laughs> um, metal screws with a quarter inch socket head on them. And so with some amount of trepidation or intrepidation, whatever the other big word I'm trying to use, I reached up in here and got most of them loose. Let's get one. There we go. I don't want to drop it. If I do, I can take my little magnet. And what do you know? Look at this. This. And these fancy spacer washers are what is holding the bridge and the bridge plate on this guitar. So... Um, I got to get this done because I need to turn return the socket set to the local mechanic. And meanwhile, he's borrowing some of my fake luthier tools to do something. I don't know what he's doing either. But once I figured this out, I am feeling so, so much better about the way I do things. It, it, it's incredible. All right, this one here is... Uh, Okay, there we go. But you can see, I'll torture myself a little bit. These are still in place, but this one broke off, and that's what's hanging up in, in there. It feels like the bridge base is glued in there. That's what we got. Incredible. Okay. Wow, what a surprise. Hey, I want to ask you something. Out of all the Lutherism, this is, is licensed. Li uh, I don't know. Is there a license for a Luthier? I guess you've got factory repair shops or whatever. But what do you call somebody that takes really old arch tops and puts them back together and, well, I, I'm thinking idiot, probably. But is there a certification for that? Anyway, here's what I want you to think about. Somebody brings you a, a guitar that's worth somewhere between $25,000, $5,000. Why are they bringing it to you? Maybe because somebody has said to them, listen, I really don't want to do that. If I do, I'm going to make money doing it. It's going to cost you uh, $800 and the guitar is worth four now. And once I do that, it'll be worth two. So they come and find you and you're like, hey, I'm a good luthier now. Think that out. So I hope we learned something in this last little clip. But let's go on to the next one. Now we're going to have to fix this thing. And that involves taking a cut on the dotted line mess on the top that could come off, and we're actually going to get it ready to put a new bridge on. What am I doing? Let's go find out. All right, I think this is a good angle um, coming in this way than over the top. I think we need this perspective, and we'll have a look. Look at that Swiss cheese where there used to be a bridge, but this is a Gibson B25 from the early to mid-60s. What happened with this guitar was plastic was a big deal, 62, 63, and the bridge that was on here, where are you, Chick Flick Teal Pointer, had a screw here, or, or more like a bolt that come up from the bottom. The bridge plate is still in this thing, but there was another piece below that held screws. Uh, this one here and this one here were mounting screws, and then these holes here were for the adjustable bolts. And so the idea was it was extruded plastic, wood bridge plate underneath, another piece of wood under there. That uh, bottom piece of wood that held these screws is gone. I'm not going to try and pull this off 
uh, the bridge plate because those bridge plates you basically heat them up and like basically use something that looks like a claw and pull them out. I can't even believe that I am working on a flat top. You know how I feel about that. This is pretty handy here, but you know, I got used to being able to use stuff like this and dental floss and I was doing fine. Um, so let's take a look at what we're going to do here. Um, first thing, we've got the guitar padded. Everything is level here. But we're going to have to put a new bridge on this, and we're going to use this style of bridge. Now, the problem is, is that the holes do not line up for the bridge pins. Okay? And some of these I've heard uh, people making repairs on these things claim that they went to put a bridge on and the bridge wasn't even lined up with the center. I always warn people, especially on arch tops, come down the side of your neck on both sides with a straight edge after you put a piece of tape right here, right here, and then you'll put a mark where the straight edge lines up here and one where the straight edge lines up here. And then you put that in the middle and you line up everything with that. You don't just automatically assume that where they bookended the pieces of wood that came together to make the soundboard that that's the middle or, or that this is the middle. Anyway, moral of the story is, fortunately, this is the weekend where you fall back and gain an hour, so I think I'll use that hour, which I've already used on three other projects today, to explain to you here what I'm doing. Now, I am not going to pull the bridge plate from this. Um, I am going to have to replace um, some wood here. And that means I'm going to have to fill these, and I'm going to use mahogany, this mahogany dowel, you see that? And I'm going to have to go to each one of these and work this and sand with a belt sander. And I've got my hide glue going on. Yeah, I'm using hide glue. I'm not using tight bond. So in case something goes wrong, you can't heat this up. But it requires that you feel down in here and go past that bridge plate. And you can see that popped up there. So I don't want this to look like a calliope in the bottom where this one's longer and this one's longer and whatever. So I do need something that I can put under the wood bridge plate right there and push up against this that's not going to stick to the glue because I don't want one of these down in here being this long and the other one longer and shorter because that might affect the tone of the guitar. I think uh, acoustic flat tops are pretty dependent on a design to make sure that there's not all kinds of things sticking out. I'm not trying to give you the Ken Parker lecture on arch tops. Have you seen that one? I'll give you, do I get this angle right? Yeah, up there, right about now. Yeah, okay. Watch that if you want to figure out if F holes were the best thing to arch top guitars. We're going to be working on an arch top that has a sound hole, an oval sound hole, a little bit. Anyway, so the moral of the story is we're going to have to work this doweling down to every one of these individually because the ones that mounted and made adjustments are different size than the ones that lined up um, the bridge. So these bridge pins, we got a lot to do to this, so we're going to do this one by one. So I want to explain something to you here that's pretty cool. A um, couple things. First off, I'm going to use this because there's parts of the bridge plate under here that don't line up with the holes. So I can take this. I don't want to drop this, by the way. So I can just go in here and get each of these holes. Remember, some of these holes are different sizes. These two are different sizes than these two, and they're all different than each of the individual string holes. So I'm going to come in here with this reamer, keep some of these reamers around, and get those holes to be where they need to be to accept the doweling that we're going to use. The whole idea about the doweling is we're going to fill these in because when we put this new bridge on, 
we're going to have to drill new holes and we want everything to match. We want good wood. Okay. If I try to pull the bridge plate out from underneath here, the way this, I, I, this to me looks like tear on the dotted line. I think that's a recipe for disaster. So I think that putting wood in, and you can see there that these things don't line up. So we'll just be drilling new holes and giving the bridge pins a good place to start. So I have this piece of round cutout that I use for a project you're going to see pretty soon about making a whole body clamp but I have a hole here so these generally need to start off to fit in there like so it doesn't go in further than that but so this needs to fit in here and then I fine tune now when I put one of these in here what I will do is put my hand in put my thumb where I can feel it and then I will take a pencil and mark here where each one of those needs to be. You see that? A lot of tedious work here. Now, again, I don't want a calliope of up and down and all kinds of different things. So I've got a couple of things here. The first one I want to do is get something to protect this top here. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah, it's a jack. And so you turn this and it, and it goes up and down. You see that? Now, if I get a piece of something that's underneath the bridge plate in there, un under that piece of wood, and I get something that has some plastic on it that glue won't stick to, like this piece of pit guard cutoff material, this will fit between a brace that's here and here. And if you want to find out where the braces are, a pretty cool way to do that is you can use these round luthier magnets and put one inside where the br bridge starts or the brace and then put the other one on the top and you can move them and watch and lay the brace out. A handy little trick for you. Round luthier magnets are the best. Anyway... The top of this jack is also magnetic. So you can find out exactly where the jack is or if you're close by putting the jack in there, moving it around and putting the magnets on top and they will stick to the top of the jack. Anyway, the way this works is you have this gadget that has a socket that fits on this and you put a piece of wood on the bottom of the guitar or a couple I keep these around these are from cigar boxes and I can put this in like so I want this pointing towards the sound hole and I get it in here and I want to get it close I want to get it stood up I can see it there and then I'll just take and put the jack piece on it and I can just turn this up once I get it in position all right there we go these things come apart here like so, so you can just leave the one that's attached to the jack. Now, just to show you what we've got going on here, underneath there's something stopping everything from coming through. So, it also has a plastic coating on it. So when we put these down in here and cut them off, they will stop right there. So now it's just a matter of going through and we'll do this one, this one, and this one first, then this one, and then we will cut. There's a lot of belt sanding to go on here to make sure everything is round, and I'm going to use hide glue, so we'll tape um, the rest of this area off nice. As nice as you can with hide glue and tape, right? Okay. Okay, so we've got this one sanded down where it's hitting the bottom there, and we're just going to put a mark like so 
and we had that mark there already you see that and then we're just going to take a flush cut saw like so and we are just going to cut that off and then we will test fit it and we've got some sandpaper around now I would really like to do this on a jigsaw and mass produce it but I'm going to end up with a cut finger and a mess so we don't want to do that so we'll just cut them one by one and then again there's going to be some sanding to do once one is cut we're going to want to go with the next one and try to get it in there and that's where the sanding is going to take place you see that now when you get the plug cut there's a taper to it and so, no matter how careful you are, again, you don't want to be taking this to a, a belt sander because you'll take your fingers off. So take your little round piece of wood and a piece of sandpaper there and get those nice and flat. You're going to have to do some work up here with a violin maker's knife or something a little later. So you want to make sure that everything fits. It's okay to dry fit them like so because they'll tap down once the glue is there. Off to the belt sander and the next one. Okay, we've got the first two outer ones cut, and the hide glue is warm as my fingers will attest to. So we're just going to put not too much there. Remember, you don't want these plugs sticking into the piece that's holding on to the, the back or supporting underneath here even though there's a plastic coating on there. I always have a, a wet rag around. We're going to do this one at a time. This is tedious work. This is why luthiers, those that call themselves that, are never rich. Just remember, the more work that you can get out of the way up here on this end, including this here, the less there will be later. I actually have my high glue heater right behind me. There we go. There's one. All right, I zoomed in a little bit here so we can catch these last two. Put the hide glue in the hole like that. Remember this flat piece of wood really helps us out here. Now, you want to remember, if you got a little chip away, there's something that's not just right, you've got this little block that I've been cutting these, these dowels with, with just a, a, a flat saw. So I can take some hide glue and just go along there and push it in if I need to. I don't need to do that there. But now... We are on the last of the holes that used to be for the bridge pins. What's left on the brush it will soak in around the edges. Now there may be a little bit of filing to do once this dries up, but I can just put tape there. I can use my trusty violin maker's knife if that becomes necessary. So that's this part, people. Okay, one last look at life here. We've got our we've got our jack out. Pretty handy. Watch what you pay for these things. Now, there's one out there that's $170. There's one out there that's 50. One of them's really expensive. 
one of them might not work like the other one. And then, remember that piece of pick guard material cut off we had taped under there, jacked up? Yeah, you don't want that kind of drippage down at the bottom of a 1947 zero zero one seven martin now do ya pay attention to the details people all right here we go and they come out fine putting the new bridge on we're going to do that uh later on down the road in a different episode because i think you're probably going uh oh this may not end well um we'll see but Again, here's the moral of the story. How much pressure is coming off the back of that bridge right here? And how much dependence do we have on what's holding it on? And all it takes is somebody put a set of heavy strings on it and take this adjustment thing that was going on. And, and, and the next thing you know, you got something broken loose. And, and working on this kind of stuff is risky. We all know that. So... I have a little question for you. Let's say that, you know, those those plugs we put in here, let's say that you reach in here. And that's the one nice thing about these things. I will admit it. You can, you can uh, have some room to work on things and get a jacket. But let's say on that sound plate, uh, or that bridge plate underneath there, that there's a little bit of wood sticking out or something. And you know that to get the alignment tool on here to get the new bridge set where it needs to be and centered up, you're going to use magnets and, 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 and a tool to do that. But that tool depends on whatever's underneath here to be flat. What do you do if you got a little piece of wood or a little end of a plug sticking up? Let me show you a cool little tool. Do you know what sprinkler systems are? Do you know what PVC pipe is? You know what couplers are, where you take a coupler and you glue one piece of pipe to the next, and it's round. Do you know what 400 grit sandpaper is? Do you know what 400 grit sandpaper with adhesive on the back is? Do you know that you can take a half inch round coupling and put sandpaper on it and put it on your finger like a ring or a slide and go back in here where your little problems might be on the bridge plate and oh yeah do that and because it's round only the part that's sticking up gets hit you can use this like a ring you can use this to reach all kinds of odd areas and it makes you slow down a little bit 15 cents you're welcome. You like, give me a subscribe. If somebody else thought of this before, don't just let me let me have it. It's all I have, man. See you soon.